Hello, hello. Welcome to Warriors Talk with author and founder, Lady Rochelle, where we move away from awareness towards action. And this is day 10 of the special edition of Warriors Talk, which is Visions of Happiness. And tonight our poem is going to be Sweet Victory. So again, each night I am reciting a poem or reading a poem from my collection. Um, over 10 years old in the making and I'm excited that I am done with this collection and I am sharing it out with the world um, up and up to my 50th birthday that's coming up so I'm doing 28 days 28 poems until June 28 which is my 50th birthday so that's just a way for me to um, celebrate leading up to my birthday so tonight the poems are all like the poems from Sunday through um, Saturday are all going to be um, centered around my cancer journey. And so the poems that you're going to hear are going to be related to that. So as always, when I'm done, I will explain where my mind was when I did the poem. So this one is called Sweet Victory. Breast cancer has impacted my life, forcing me to live every day on purpose, with purpose. No longer sitting on the sidelines, watching everybody else live out their dreams. It paralyzed me temporarily and erased my beauty, only to replace it with a canvas for an artist waiting to create a better version of me, all while embracing sweet victory. Breast cancer took me out of my comfort zone and put me in a zone where I was forced to create my own reality of sexy, normal, and happy. It made my family rally around me and showered me with support, cheer me on every step of the way. The impact was devastating, but I bounced back with every ounce of fight I had in me, all while embracing sweet victory, continuously rising above life trials and tribulations thrown at me, being able to stand and straighten my crown that was presented by my king, never giving up or giving in, keeping a tight grip towards the wind, all while embracing sweet victory. A thriver that holds and never folds. A survivor of storms attempted to erase me. A warrior by trade is what they call me. A conqueror by birth is what was granted to me. All while embracing sweet victory. Okay, so that's that piece. Yay! So I'm excited that this is day 10 um, of my visions of happiness, me sharing out my poems. So this particular poem is titled Sweet Victory. And this poem came when I was done with my surgery. So I had surgery back in August 15th of 2014. So leading up to my surgery, the night before my surgery, I was really nervous and just, I had a lot of anxiety. And I remember um, I sent my girls to go be with their dad for the summer so that I can do my cancer treatment and not have to really explain anything to them. Like, why is mommy losing hair? Why is mommy losing weight? Why mommy turning so dark? You know, why mommy can't do our hair because her fingernails are falling off? You know, like all of those things that was going through my mind. So I decided to send my girls to be with their dad for the summer while, while I did my cancer um, treatment and my surgery. So they came back, I think it was like a couple of days after my surgery. And so I wouldn't have to really kind of like, um, don't touch me, I can't hug you, you know, because I'm sore or I don't wanna, you know, um, mess with my stitches. So I kind of just, you know, let them have fun with their dad. I didn't tell them that I was having surgery. I told my son because he was the oldest. So he was there with me and he was here um, when I got back. Him and his wife took care of me and everything they cooked for me. Um, they helped me get dressed. They helped me change my stitches. They helped me drain my tubes and everything. He took me back for my, uh, my son took me back for my follow-up appointment. And so, you know, just being in that room waiting to go to surgery, I had to be there at six in the morning. So I got there at six in the morning. And believe it or not, I didn't go to surgery until two in the afternoon. So I got there early and it was my son and it was my daughter who was 18 months at the time. So she was the only um, girl that was there. So she was 18 months at the time, little girl that was there anyway. And then um, one of um, my son's best friend, Teresa was there. And then my mentor and my big sister through it all, um, 
Annie Owens was there and she's a two-time cancer survivor. And then my mom was there, my first lady, uh, Anastasia Richardson was there. And then um, my, one of my best friends, Valerie, was there. So all of these people was there, you know, just waiting with me until my surgery came. We prayed and, it, you know, the anesthesiologist was there to give me my <laughs> my drugs. And he told me, he said, I'm going to give you what they give, what, what Michael Jackson was taking, but I'm not going to give you a heavy dose. And so before he gave it to us, I said, can we pray? And he said, sure, let's, let's sure we can pray. So we, everybody joined hands and we prayed. And, um, and then once we got done, this was, well, back up a little bit. My surgeon uh, stuck his head in the window and I was wondering like, where have you been? I was like, where you been? I've been waiting. I got here at six o'clock. It's two in the afternoon and I still haven't went into surgery. And he was like, be thankful that you haven't had your surgery yet because the person before you ran into complications. So that's why, you know, we're running behind. I was like, oh, wow. So I was like, I hope the other person is okay. And so I was like, are you ready? Are you tired? Like, he was like, no. I'm ready. And it took, he said it took about four hours for the surgery. And then they had me in recovery for about an hour. And then um, I, I just remember rolling down after we prayed, um, just rolling down the, um, the hallway and just looking up. And, you know, they, my doctor was talking to me, you know, they was trying to, you know, get my mind out of what was happening. And the anesthesiologist was trying to make sure that the medicine was working. So he was like, oh, just tell me what you're seeing, you know. And I, I remember looking up in the room. And, and just seeing everything in the room. And then I, I was out. I woke up, you know, I woke up in recovery, just feeling like, you know, I had this gag sensation because they had a, a tube down my throat. So I remember waking up and all my family was around me and it's like, hey, and I'm like, I made it through. Like, like I, I made it through surgery. Like, you know, going through surgery, knowing, that they're about to try to cut, they're about to try to cut the cancer out of you and pray that they get it all. And before, like at six in the morning, before I went to, before you know I had the surgery, they they bring you in and then you go and take, um, they put you through like a scan, and this and it tell the it tells the doctor where to go to the cancer. So they put this dye. Well, he did them. It looked like a marker. He put he did the x-ray so he could see the cancer. And then he put like markers on me so that the doctor knew where to go, where to cut, you know, in order to get the cancer out. So, you know, and I'm just saying to myself, I'm just praying that y'all got all this cancer out. You know, I was hoping that the chemo did it because I did chemo first, but the chemo did not get it all out. So I still um, when when I went and they put me through the skin and my body lit up. It only lit up in that one spot, like that one little spot it lit up. So I'm like, okay, all right, Lord, just that one little spot. So when we um, when we was done with surgery, um, again, my kids were in the room and my family was in there and I was just happy to be alive. I was just, I wasn't sore. I was just kind of like out of it. And um, and I told my son, I was like, Ma, you hungry? I was like, yeah, I want some Wendy's. He was like, okay. So he went and got me some Wendy's. And he was like, he came back and he was like, I'm going to stay the night with you, him and my, my little daughter. We're going to stay the night with you, Ma. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, I'm okay. I'm okay. And then I, I fell asleep. I woke up at seven in the morning. My doctor came in. He was like, you're going, you're going home today. So I had surgery at two that, that day. I think it was on a Friday. And then that, that Saturday, he was like, you're going home today and I'll see you in a week. So he, he released me home drains uh, tubes hanging out of me and everything um bandaged up and everything and i went home and um i was just i was excited to be home they kept asking me do you want some medicine do you want some pain medicine i was like nope i'm not in pain i wasn't in pain i was uncomfortable but i uncomfortable but i was not in pain but i was just so i was just so excited to have my surgery over with because i had such a big anxiety behind it you know and i prayed about it and everything but i still just going under the knife for them to cut you. I didn't want them to make a mistake. And I didn't want them to tell me, hey, we couldn't get everything out. So a week later, I had to do a follow-up appointment with my um, with my surgeon. So the surgeon, he met with me. And as soon as I was waiting in the room for him, as soon as he came in the room, he just reached out with his hand and he shook my hand. He was like, you know, congratulations, you're cancer free. We got all the cancer out. And he told me, he said, the only thing when they went in for surgery, 
the only thing that was um it was cancer in my lymph node the size of a pencil lid and he was like we got all of it out we tested um 15 lymph nodes around that lymph node just to make sure the cancer didn't you know get into any of those lymph nodes and it, all those lymph nodes um tested um negative so i was like thank you jesus so you know it was a weight lifted then you know lifted off of me and then i had to go home and just you know thank god for what he has done for me so i just want to encourage anybody that may be getting ready to go through surgery or you know someone who um has who just been diagnosed and they're having a fear of facing this surgery just know that everything is in god's hands you know and everything is in, in his it's in his timing and, and it's in his will so whatever his will is for your life then that's what's going to happen. So, and I still pray. I still pray like, you know, God grant me long life. Lord, grant me a healthy life. Lord, preserve my organs because of the chemo going in my body. You know, it can mess up my heart. It can mess up my lungs. It can mess up my kidneys. You know, with so many things that the chemo can mess up that I was like afraid. I just asked God to preserve my organs, you know, with this chemo. So what I normally get from the side effects from chemo is I get neuropathy in my legs, like my, in, my, in my feet, they kind of like, it's kind of like it tightens up, like it gets really, really stiff. And it just, it stays there until it gets ready to release on its own. There's really nothing I can do. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, it normally happens when I'm laying down. So like if I'm out or if I'm driving like a long periods of time, um, sometimes I used to, but not anymore. I used to get chemo brain to where I would forget what I was saying. You know, if I had a thought, I'd be like, oh, what was I, what was I just saying? And I would forget it, but I'm not claiming that because my God has healed me. And I just thank God for, for his healing power. I thank him for the peace that surpasses all understanding when you're going through something devastating as cancer, that you can still have a peace inside of you going through cancer. You still can have that joy inside of you going through cancer. You still can have a will to live going through cancer. So I just thank God for just allowing me to have that will to live, just allow me to have that fight in me, just allow my warrior mode to kick in for that warrior mentality to kick in for me to fight because I wanted to be around for my babies. I wanted to be around to raise them. I have witnessed so much. My son had got married. He had a baby. I witnessed the baby being born. My daughter got married. My 22 year old got married. And then I, she graduated from college. She just finished college this year. Um, and she has um, her BA in communications. And then I think it's a BA in communications. And then she, my other daughter graduated from eighth grade, you know, so there's so many, and I saw my daughter go on prom. It's so many things that I have witnessed, you know, that if I would have passed, if I, if cancer had it took me out in 2013, it was so many things I would have missed, but I thank God for granting me more time and granting me um, time enough to, so that I, so that I can spend time with my babies and I can watch them grow and I can watch them, you know, um, I can watch them scratch off some stuff off of their bucket list. So I'm excited to be here to be able to watch that because, I mean, yeah, somebody else can raise your kids, but it's nothing like you raising your kids. It's nothing like you being here for your kids when they're going through those milestones. So I am grateful to be here. So this is sweet victory for me. So thank you, God, for my sweet victory. So join me tomorrow night for um, day 11 of Visions of Happiness, which is a special edition of Warriors Talk my poem collection i've been working on it for 10 years and i am finally done with it so i'm sharing it out with the world and i'm sensitive about my stuff but if you like it just hit that like button button share it out to somebody else but join me right here at 8 p.m tomorrow night and this is lady rochelle often founder of warriors talk where we are changing lives one warrior at a time